All right, hey guys, thanks for your patience there. It's been a while since I did any streaming, so i um, kind of forgotten what I needed to set up. So we had a couple of false starts. So <laughs> apologies there. Um, welcome. Look at that, just in time. The final table. I've got a copy here, look. In fact, I've got 10 copies. They, a publisher sent me 10 copies. Um, but yeah, here's here's the book. Look at this. It is out now in the UK. Um, super excited about that. Uh, if you haven't bought it yet, I don't know why. Because even if you're in America and it's not been released yet, you can pre-order it. Um, West Wales Ed said can confirm this is a great read. Thank you, Ed. Ed, um, um, yeah, he doesn't he doesn't know this yet, but uh, his name is in this book, so he does now. Um, on page six, because when he read the pre uh, the proof copy, um, he uh, the acknowledgements and all of the stuff was not in there. But anyway, they are now. So Ed, your name's in the book, mate. Uh, all right, Jack, how's it saying? Good, uh, how's it going? Good day, uh, good day. Does it ship to Malta? Um, I believe so. So this is this is. I think there's been some slight confusion. I'm getting a lot of messages on social media, and it says I've been on the website, and it says it does. It ships to USA and Canada and the UK, but I can't see any other information about other countries. What it actually says on the website is that it ships from the UK and from the US um, and then it does actually you know, go to Canada as well. So it's my understanding that it, they will ship it from the UK to Malta. That's my understanding. Now, if I've got that wrong, that's just me because I'm an author and not in charge of a publishing company. Um, so my best advice for you is to contact the publisher direct and go to D and B poker dot com um their email address is info at dnbpoker.com and find out and i think the more people that bombard them with messages um the better because then they'll um yeah they'll know what they need to uh you know, potentially put on the website to say hey we do ship to malta um earlier on i had a question how do i get it to poland um how do i get it to romania how do i get it to denmark um those are the countries i've had questions about so far so fingers crossed it it does i can't see why it, why it wouldn't um but uh yeah the only thing i'm thinking is um with uh with the uk leaving the eu does that affect i don't know shipping costs and customs things like that but i don't i don't know i don't ha i don't handle any of this all i did was spend six months in this very office almost every day writing this book and there are about 80,000 words in this book 336 pages and um yeah here's an example uh, actually let's do this here's an example of uh, you know we've got black and white and a bit of red and pink in there as well um let's have a look this is a, an even better page look at that beautiful i wonder if i can i should have gone just full screen for this but you know here's uh, here's an example of what it looks like looks like if you're familiar with the uh, bubble factor and risk premium. Uh, that's not going to focus, is it? Uh, if you're if familiar with the bubble factor and risk premium stuff on uh, uh, HRC, then you'll understand what this table means. Uh, some charts, though, on the left-hand side as well. Um, so, yeah. So, anyway, the book is out. The book is available in the UK. It's uh, I think it's being uh, released in the US uh, on the 1st of July. So, you've still got a few weeks to wait if you're in the States or Canada. Or any country kind of that side of the world. I guess if you're ordering from Mexico or Argentina, Brazil. My guess is it would ship from the USA. Um, so yeah, got a few weeks to wait. Um, Lanting says, yo, yo, how's it going? Uh, Yuha on YouTube says, need, need jump start. Um, oh, because we had uh, a couple of false starts with the uh, <laughs> with the stream. But we're here today. Uh, this is what we're going to do, guys. What I've done is just load up the Scoop 109 main event. Uh, I made day two cash for, I'm not sure what, um, maybe 3x the buy-in. Um, so, yeah, I didn't make day three or day four or anything like that. Um, but I do like reviewing Vanilla Hands. And I'm going to try something new today. I've never done this on the stream, I don't believe. But I'm going to show you this. I've loaded all of the VPIP hands into GTO Wizard. So rather than 
go th- I haven't gone through any of these hands, by the way. Um, so rather than go through them and run Sims in Pio and HRC and all of that, I haven't done that. Uh, what we're going to do is, is run through this. Now you can see uh, we didn't do too badly. I mean, there's a few EV losses here. There's quite a lot of hands where you know, they don't exist in GTO world. Either I did the wrong thing pre or it went multi-way. Um, but yeah, there's a, there's some, there are some mistakes though. So yeah, when we get to them, I mean, that's a, that's a pretty big mistake. Not sure what I did here, what the mistake is, but, um, looks like a funky, funky spot. Oh, it's probably, I, um, I can already tell. I just check called river and, uh, I'll explain why later, but anyway, this should be pretty fun. As always, guys, if you have any questions, then just let me know. Um, I three bet here. I mean, I don't think there's too much to say. I guess you can flat as well. And uh, just to make sure everything is good. We see a limp. That's kind of weird. All right. No, I'm just going to give up. Yeah, not too fast. Uh, okay, so the blinds must have just gone up. We have 63 bigs. Uh, we see a raise in a three bet. I see some players who are like, oh, you know what, like maybe we can just cold call here. Six big blinds to win potentially lots more. Um, I, I think it's unlikely the solver is ever going to do that. Um, but if you felt like this player was not going to fall bet very often, I guess. I, I don't like it. I, I would never do it. I would always just fold. Um, and the reason, so I said earlier on, I've, um, I've got all my VPEP hands here. I've also... Uh, filtered for where we're in the big blind. So interesting that we get this spot straight away. Um, but yeah, filtered for spots in the big blind because sometimes there's a small blind limps and we check, we haven't VPIPed, right? We were forced in um, in the big blind. So we want to look at those hands as well. And uh, anyway, oh, he did fall, but... Okay, we raise ace 10 suited and we face a jam. And again, this is pretty straightforward. All right, we lose that one. Uh, again, just a hand in the big blind, we see a raise in a three bet, we're just going to fold. See what happens here. So playing 25 big blinds, effective. Um, kind of worried about the small blind jamming and then us not being able to do anything. Um, if you heard a weird noise there, that was my chair. Oh, I did jam and we have to fold. I wonder what they turn up with. Let's have a look. All right, well, we just run into it. Um, but yeah, we weren't involved in the hand. Uh, we open sixes. Have we won a hand yet? I'm not sure. Go for a small C bet. Nothing too drastic so far. And I think that's that's going to be confirmed by GTO Wizard, right? Um, let's go back up to the top. Yeah, I mean, so there are no 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 blunders so far, which is, you know, good. All right, we'll probably defend here. Queen four suited. Uh, none of the suits, well, no spades on the board, basically. Um, we have a backdoor straight draw. But uh, facing this size, I'm just going to let it go. Nothing exciting so far. I guess it's just what happens at the start sometimes. Raise and take. Okay, right. So this is a multi-way spot that is not going to have... Um, it must be this one. Yeah, so it says here, non-existing GTO spot. I I think GTO was really going to come out with multi-way stuff. Um, if you're wondering, like, well, what's happened to DTO... Uh, you can see here, uh, I'm still absolutely all in on DTO products, um, but I just wanted a way, really quick way to analyze hands today rather than having to run my own sims. And I do believe we there's something going to happen with DTO, like some new update, um, but I don't really have much more information than what's available online. So uh, we'll watch this space for, um, for that one. Um, okay, well... What do we think here? So general sort of heuristics, um, the closer we are to the person who flatted, the more we're going to want to check. 10 high boards, though, are quite interesting because this player shouldn't have any offsuit 10x. Um, I don't think ace 10 off gets to flat here. So they're only left with the suited and we block hands like queen 10 of diamonds and king 10 of hearts. Um, so we could potentially start bluffing here. Then you've got to think, what kind of hands are we trying to get to fold? And we're really trying to target hands like diamonds and spades. Um, so it kind of sucks to have a queen of diamonds because you know, if we bet the ace queen of diamonds, is going to have to fold. And betting small here is quite nice because this player has to worry about the big blind. So I don't think can continue with ace queen of diamonds. That would be you know, pretty marginal, if not losing. 
Um, so, yeah, but we have the Queen of Diamonds. It'd be really nice if we had King of Hearts, Queen of Clubs, for example, blocking some flush draws and black door flush draws. Um, so, yeah, I can kind of go either way, I think, with this. Um, so at this point, you know, on the on the flop, we were going to try and target, like, some ace highs. Sorry, uh, yeah, ace highs to fold, um, especially with, you know, not hearts or one heart. Um, not too many offsuit hands in uh, this early position, but you know it's uh, early in a main event, so you know could, there could be a lot of hands in here that we um, don't even realise. Ian Simpson in the house, Cheops thirty two in the house as well. Says both of them say hello. How's it going, guys? Good to see you. Um, I mean, honestly, I'm probably just going to give up. I think we've got better bluffs. We can definitely check with some flush draws. But I'm somewhat tempted to bet. But I think it's... Uh, yeah, we, we're then just trying to get... Well, I mean, eights and nines might not even fold. We're trying to get fives, fours that might not even flat pre to fold. Um, And I don't really want to go bet turn jam river, try and get an ace to fold, right? So but I don't really like it. So I think I just give up here. Okay, well, thankfully we did raise in a three bet. Oh, sorry, raise in a check raise. Um, It's a two bet, not a three bet. Um, is he all in? Okay. Well, we don't get to see that hand, unfortunately. Pocket fives, easy defend. Uh, okay, 10 9 9 board. Face this small bet, it's about third pot. I think sometimes we can sort of level ourselves into being confused as to what to do here, but the bet is very small. We're going to do a lot of folding on this board anyway. I mean, think of all of that, like, king three of spades and queen six of spade hands that we have. I mean, even... Queen seven of diamonds is not really gonna love life. Backdoor straight draw, backdoor flush draw, an overcard, but yeah, not really, not really loving life too much. Um, but I think if we end up folding this hand, we're gonna be folding too much. But I do think this is a good one to uh, to start with. Take a look at. Um, are we supposed to continue in uh, in this spot? Eve, uh, Ivan B on YouTube says hi. Jungle best says Mr. Ian is in the house. Um, so I presume I call, yeah. And it goes check, check. Um, on this run out, I think in position can check back some 7x, he can check back pocket 6s, he can check back pocket 8 So I think it's too thin to bet for value. But again, we can have a look at this one. Goes check, check, and they do have a 4. So you might just, you know, if you're very results orientated, you might go, oh, I missed a value bet. We could have got called by ace 4. There's not many 4x hands that land on this river, right? So let's take a look. Maybe we absolutely blundered the flop. Um, pocket fives. Okay, well, I think we're doing pretty well. So we called pre. We could actually jam. I don't like jam at all. Very. Um, one thing I just want to add to this. Uh, something we were talking about in the my academy the other day was. Uh, can you look at tournament hands like post flop in um yeah, from ICM world? And I know that. You absolutely can for pre-flop, but I don't think you can do it for post-flop just yet in GTA Wizard. Um, having said that, this is just chip EV, right? Um, but I don't really like three bet jamming fives here in a soft tournament. I just don't think it's going to be worth it. Anything, I mean, you can see the EVs are identical. And in theory, you're supposed to mix, right? This frequency or split in, in this frequency. But in practice, you don't have to. Uh, checking 100%, that looks good. Calling 99%, I mean, basically that will just... I don't know why we would fold 0.8. That just potentially suggests the sim hasn't been run for long enough. Checking the turn, check, check, and then check river. Yeah, we don't get to value bet. Um, so I'm pretty happy with that. I don't think even we even need to look at the solution. One thing, actually, one thing I would like to look at is... The, um, my explanation of what happened on the turn. I'm not sure why that's trying to translate. Weird. Um, okay, I've not looked at it in uh, this sort of short annotated format before. Um, normally you get the big boxes, um, but it's because I'm on the stream and I've squashed everything to make it fit in. Okay, so what are we even looking at here? Big blind. Oh, here we go. Check. Um, so I said things like sixes and... Um, Oh, this is the flop. Let's let's just try and get to the right node. Um, okay, that's kind of. No, that's not. What? Why are we not seeing what I want to see? 
I said hands like sixes, might check and uh, eights, uh, eights, mixes. I wonder, they probably use a smaller size on the flop, right? 1.2, right? Yeah, you can see, look at this, 92% and not too much, 1.95. So, okay, well, let's go down this node instead because he's probably just using that size as his small bet size. Um, now I can't remember what the turn was, seven of clubs, right? We'll get there, we'll get there, guys. Okay, yeah, so look, eight, eights does a lot of checking, sixes does a lot of checking, all of these hands. So we're losing to these hands. Um, yeah, and then the four of clubs, I just thought it was too thin to bet. Yeah, and you can see that it that it absolutely is. But we can definitely bet some 10x. We can even bet a seven, which is nice. Uh, and we've got some bluffs as well. I was going to say that mainly betting with clubs, but there's some other, other ones in there as well. Um, but yeah, these are... I mean, if we go back to the turn, I'm kind of, now I recognize I'm doing this quite quickly, guys. Um, a lot of the check back, if I just click this, a lot of the checking back, uh, check back range is uh, these these ace highs and and some also some some king highs. So when you've got a hand like king jack off, you can get king queen and some ace highs to fold. And so just thinking in terms of those, that logic basically. Uh, all right, let's close this. So we are doing all right so far, no blunders. All right. Um, okay, so I'm looking at this board and first thing is that I'm thinking about what does the overarching strategy look like here? Now, I think it'd be very easy to just default to small bet. Small bet wouldn't be that bad. I mean, if we get check raised, we have two overs and a gut shot, so we can probably continue. I'd, I'd prefer to have a spade. The only thing I would say is that in Solverland, if it says to continue, great. But how often is the big blind going to be hitting the check raise frequency that the solver does? So you've got to be wary of that as well. Um, so I would say uh, that I would just go for a small bet. I, I would like to look at this, though, to see if there is any big betting. Um, you know, the most obvious examples for big bets here would be hands like ace-10 or pocket jacks. You know, they're strong but vulnerable hands on this board. Um, but if we did have, say, top set, block a lot of 10x that can continue, then maybe we don't get to bet big. The only thing is there's flush draws and then the 10 and the 9 are connected, the 10 and the 6 are connected, the 9 and the 6 are connected. So there's loads of connectivity within the texture of the flop. So I would, I'm would i interested to see what the solution looks like. Let's have a look at what we did. We did actually go big bet. Wow, okay. This is uh, somewhat unusual. He then leads for third pot on this turn. Now... A really common sort of heuristic, it's not always true, but a very common thing is if the middle card pairs, for example, the big blind's going to have a lot more 9x than we are. They're also going to have more 9x than they do 10x because some of their 10x is going to raise. But we bet big on the flop, so therefore they go check call with more of their 10x rather than if we bet small, they might check raise more frequently with a 10. So if we'd bet small, it would be very weird to see them lead this turn, I think. But if we bet, as we bet big, I th you know we might start to see some some more bets with it with a ten. That's basically what I'm you know, where I'm going with this. Um, but anyway, we have uh, two overs and a gut shot, so I decide to call, and then he checks river, and we have a pretty bad hand. So, what do you guys like to do here? Let me know in the chat. Let's uh, just get some interactivity going. What do you like here? Do we check? Do we jam? Do we go, I don't know, like half pot, 11.585 big blinds, whatever, if that's, that's it. Ian, I knew you would say jam. And uh, I won't explain why. What do we like, guys? Let me know in the chat. I'm going to see if there were any mistakes made in this hand. There were not. Okay, well, this is good. Look, no EV loss, although we've got a big butcher or big blunder coming up. So, okay, Shredder says, Jam unlocking the spades. Don't think we get here with a lot of worse hands as well. Yeah. Chiop says, Check and give up. Fake player says, I'm a nit, so I can't see myself jamming on the micros at least. Okay, well, I, I appreciate the honesty. So, it's quite nice that we block Queen Jack. Um, I think in practice, though, if he gets there with Queen Jack, 
he's just going to rip River, right? So the Queen is somewhat relevant, I think. Um, but yeah, we unblock spades, which is really nice. We don't want to have a spade in our hand. Um, but what kind of hands would bet turn and then fold River? We're looking at like 9x, 6x, uh, ace x of spades. There's a there's a small chance. I'm trying to think of some hand. Uh, yeah, there's some some. Uh, yeah, 10, 10, king, queen, nine is our hand, right? The best five card hand. There are some hands that he can lead turn with that we that we beat, right? So that's a consideration as well. I think if we had you know, some strong ace highs, we should probably consider checking back. If we, um, but yeah, that's a that's the only thing. So if I mean, it says that we we didn't make a mistake, but sometimes the solver will say like you could jam three percent of the time and check ninety seven, and if you do jam, you've not made a mistake because you can do it that you know small frequency, uh, small percentage of the time. I, uh, Vimal says half pot. Ivan says maybe we need to jam and polarize. We don't have spades and we block queen jack. Yeah, so jamming jamming would definitely be a polarized bet, and the reason for that is that we jam good for hands for value, and we jam bad hands as a bluff, and then the hands in the middle would just check. So for example, if we had a nine or an eight or a six, we probably don't get to jam for value, right? But if we had a 10 or a seven or a queen jack, something like that, then, or uh, hands better than that, like a full house, then we would jam for value. So yeah, anyway, I decided to jam and he calls with a six. No, he doesn't, he folds. Um, but yeah, let's take a look at this really quickly. How often do we get to? Yeah, I mean, look, so there, so the fact that there is some checking at a decent frequency as well on this river uh, suggests to me that there are some hands that he can lead turn with that uh, we beat. So like King X of spades, um, for example, or King three of spades. So yeah, I think that's, that's, my, that's what I'm thinking. Um, I'm gonna look at this turn to see if there is actually any, what is this? You guys see this? Google Translate. Apparently it's in Polish. Um, okay. 8.1. It's like half pot. Is that right? I can't really see. Uh, 8.1. I wish you had the percentages next to it. Um, but the pot size is 16.2. So that looks like 50% to me. And, yeah, I mean, there's not really too much leading going on, is there? Hmm. I've got some weak flush draws here, but this is why I think checking is probably good because you still beat all of these hands that, um, that check. Um, how do I scroll across here? Oh, maybe that was it. Uh, okay, what was the river cards? Eight of diamonds? What did it, Ian says something? Asex of diamonds. <laughs> Lanting, I don't know what you refer referring to with big Billy Big Bollocks. <laughs> I do love uh, that saying though. Okay, why is there no king queen? Oh, okay. Well, we this is something we talked about, right? That we probably don't big big bet the flop. Um, so I think that's probably why there's hardly any king queen off. Um, but facing this line, okay, maybe he did the 3.25 rather than the 8.1, but, um, oh, and actually versus this sizing, we start folding King Queen off, right? Yeah. Okay. So then this is the downside of not running your own Sims is that the race, uh, their bet sizes are not the same as they were in game. Um, okay. Uh, so now we, there are no hands, so he doesn't ever use this size, so it's completely pointless and... That's why the sim says we did a good thing. <laughs> um, yeah, that's kind of annoying. Yeah, it's not really going to be that useful. Yes, we can see that they bet sometimes. I mean, maybe we maybe we just go down this line again and see. Uh, but yeah, so there are some some hands that we beat here, right? Um, some missed flush draws that just decide to give up. Uh, but then we can get some. Hmm. Maybe ace eight to fold. But yeah, I'm going to look at the flop in a moment. 
um, yeah, a say off is indifferent, and then we get these Miss Flush drawers and this AX to fold down here. So we can get some better hands to fold, which is nice. Um, okay, and we've got some a sex. No, not really. Okay, let's go back to the flop. This is not that interesting, is it? Uh, let's go to, is this the flop? This is the flop. Now, yeah, there's not really much big betting this. What's this, like half pot? So half pot's the biggest the biggest size, and with king queen, there's a bit of half pot betting, not very much big betting, and um, so yeah. So I think it's somewhat reasonable, uh, but yeah, not to have taken the big size. And this is big blinds strategy facing the bet so we can get some ace highs to fold we can get some gut shots to fold so get you know get some hands with you know, somewhat decent equity but uh yeah anyway there's not too much to to talk about in there we know we didn't really make, make a mistake but then the solver because they're pre-made solutions it's suggesting that you know, we we land on the river with a in the spot where the out of position doesn't actually have any hands so it doesn't really make any sense um, okay, so let's move on. Jstock12 says, any WSOP plans? No plans at the moment, but I am getting a bit of FOMO seeing chip updates and stuff on Instagram. So no plans to go at the moment. Um, that's it. Right, well, okay, so back to this amount. Uh, we decided to squeeze here. Uh -huh. yeah, I, I don't remember what happens in this hand, but this is kind of weird. I mean, yes, he's flattered against a... And under the gun open, they're pretty deep. I am uh, squeezing and folding if anyone decides to jam. Because I just, just don't think we're going to see the suited wheel aces and the suited broadways often enough. Um, I see a bit small. We get check raised. Oh, spicy. Right, okay. This is why we blundered it. This is the first blunder, wasn't it? Um, What's going on here? Seabedding is always good <laughs> because you'd very often find that your opponents are not aggressive enough um, facing a seabed, even if we bet 20% pot. Um, against this check raise, I mean, they could be check raising some draws. It's not so, on the one hand, it's not good to have ace of x, sorry, the ace of clubs because we want them to have, um, you know, ace two, ace five of clubs, something like that. I mean, that's just not going to happen. They shouldn't be. Uh, in these positions, um, so they could then have you know the ace jack ace ten, and when we have ace queen, that would be pretty reasonable. Um, but they could be check raising a hand like jack ten of clubs, king queen of clubs, queen jack of clubs, something like that, and we you know doing all right against against those hands. And we like it's only an eight big blind raise, right? So eight to win forty three, or plus the eight, I guess. Um, and we can improve, and we kind of improve, but just not enough so at this point yes we're loving life against a hand like um king queen of clubs but uh we're really crushed against a value range which can include sets and uh even like so played big pairs right i think big pairs could definitely play like this flat pre call the squeeze they have like aces kings queens jacks even and just decide to send it here um so I folded, and uh, apparently it's a mistake. P Mr. P-Man says, evening, guys. Evening, how's it going? Let's see where we went wrong, or where the solver thinks we went wrong. Okay, raising looks good. You could call some of the time, but squeezing looks nice. Uh, betting small looks also nice. You can also bet even smaller, 10% like pot, but we went 20% pot. Looks nice. And then facing the raise... We've got all three. Well, I mean, this is where, this is where, this software loses me, because how can how can getting in be, yeah. So this is indifferent, right? So you can see this. So all of these are going to be indifferent, um, which means that they should all be worth zero. Let's see. And yeah, they're not. Look, folding is zero, as you would expect. But if, like, maybe someone else can explain this because I don't, I don't get it. 
usually in a solver, if one line is more profitable than another, you should take that line all the time. So why is it saying we can we can jam and we can call in these spots when it's minus EV? Why why would we take a, a you know a spot where to, to lose? So I mentioned earlier on, I think this is where the solutions fall down. I think uh, the I just don't know if they've been run for long enough or something weird's happening where we're not supposed to come down this branch of the game tree. So you get this this thing going on. Um, having said all of that, folding seems pretty reasonable then, actually, facing uh, facing the check raise. It doesn't seem too bad. Um, but yeah, if anyone can explain this, please do, because normally when you see what looks like a flag, right, you've got all three options available. Um, the EV, the EV should all be the same, right? You can correct me if that's wrong. Fake player says, is it because of the stacked pot ratio then? Weird indeed. Uh, no, it shouldn't be. The solver just works in terms of EV. If, if, if calling is, or let's say, yeah, calling is minus EV and folding is zero, then you should always fold because folding is worth more than calling, right? So I don't get it. I, it's... It's bonkers to me, um, but anyway, I think we can. I think we can fold, fold flop. Um, let's um, let's see if we can do a bit of at least a bit of study with this. How do I turn this uh, this thing off? Choose another language. Page is not in Polish. There we go. No, I don't want to do that. <laughs> Page is not in Polish. Okay, well, we'll see if it works. Um, okay, so we've three bet pre. Let's have a look at his uh, strategy pre. So yeah, there's, oh, there's a tiny bit of kings and stuff, but this is kind of the region I was looking at. And then obviously nines and tens and uh, fours and threes is in there as well. You got a little bit of this and broadways. I said like queen jack, jack 10 might be in there. It's early in a one and nine main event. Uh, some ace five, but you know we block. We have the ace clubs, right? J Stock says this is interesting. Good thing they're porting ruse into GTO with should make it the best tool on the market. What is ruse? I've heard I've heard this, and I think it if it's the if it's the software I'm thinking about. But let just give me some um, yeah. Let me know really quickly. I want to know more about this. Uh, I think it's I've I've seen a little bit of of ruse. It's a yeah, solver. So there, that would be that would be great to see, and then we hopefully won't see these EV weird weird EV things. Um. Anyway, yeah. So this is what their uh, action looks like. Right. How do I? I really want to just look at the solution. Let's try again. Um. We want this one. I mean, this is really frustrating. So we, yeah, we can take either of these sizes and, okay, here we go. Now we can see, how do I move across? Um, so they can check raise. Let's have a look at some of these. Because, I mean, look, this really just really low frequency. So I think this is what's happening. It's just basically noise. Uh, but yeah, the kind of hands I just said, like Jackson 10s, right? This, uh, and then sets maybe. Uh, although sets are like just too way too strong to want to check raise, but yeah, these sort of strong but vulnerable hands and king queen of clubs, right? Yeah. Okay. Cool. So we're doing well against king queen of clubs. Um, race size is different from from what we had, and then this is where we're at in terms of the ace queen, and we are just like yeah, not really knowing what's going on. So we can just fold flop, but I think this is one I might just tend to run on my own instead. Um, sorry about that, guys. That's uh, not much I can do. Uh, about that. Uh, JSTOCK says, yes, Ruse is the solver engine by some Frenchman, really fast and accurate. Oh, and it does uh, pre-flop and post-flop, does it? Uh, does it do multi-way? That would be pretty awesome. Right, um, let's go back to here. Okay, so we end up with 20 big blinds. We defend four deuce, and I, all I see here is a gut shot and a backdoor flush draw. The problem is an A-side board. We definitely want to call. What did I do? 
Mm, not sure about this one. I did see that there was a slight error. Um, maybe we got away with one here. I mean, we could certainly get better hands to fold, right? So the hands like king, queen, king, jack, king, ten, queen, jack, queen, ten, jack, ten. Now, those hands are suited with a backdoor flush draw. They probably shouldn't fold, but in practice, players will see bet fold those, you know, a hand like nine, ten of spades that might have to continue here. I mean, maybe not, but you get the point. Let's see what the mistake was. Are we just supposed to call? Uh, yes, 100% call. So let's see if we can learn a bit from this. So yeah, it looks to me like it's it prefers check raising with like a pair and a backdoor straight draw rather than a gut shot. That's fair enough. Um, but if we did, if we did check raise, where are we? Uh, this size. I'm gonna go. Yeah, it can go small. Um, I mentioned about you know, backdoor flush draws. Um, what did I say? Like nine ten of spades. Yeah, you can see here. Look, nine ten with a backdoor flush draw wants to continue. In fact, nine ten of diamonds continue sometimes as well. But these are the ones sort of wrapped around the eight and then wrapped. Uh, yeah, wrapped around both. I guess uh, queen jack with a backdoor flush draw. King Queen with a backdoor flush draw. You know, all these hands are supposed to continue, but in practice, do they? You know, think about would you bet call Jack ten of spades on this board? Would you continue ten nine of diamonds? No. So therefore, like check raising more frequently is good. But then if you go, okay, I check raised and he called, and then I look at the solver, the solver's gonna be wrong, right? Because your opponent's folding ten nine of diamonds and maybe even some backdoor flush draws that he shouldn't. And then you're trying to blast those hands off. You know, if those hands suddenly disappear, um, I would say check raising flop and then giving. Well, checking turn a lot it would be much better. But whereas in practice, sorry, in theory, you're supposed to check raise and then try and get those hands to fold if the turn isn't, you know, one of those suits. You know, for example, if it's like a nine of diamonds, you can get the heart, spade and club hands to fold, right? Uh, Ian says, so because they're supposed to continue nine... 10 backdoor flush draw but don't does that make it better to check raise the four deuce instead instead of the bottom pairs uh yeah i think so i think so yeah and just using the logic um but this is where like understanding like seeing what the solver does and then thinking what do i think population are likely to do or what do i think this player is likely to do um i didn't recognize this player's name so i, I don't expect them to to call as often as they should. Um, but I do think we could probably just check raise smaller in that case. Um, we did check raise quite big, so. <laughs> yeah, I agree. J Stock says, as the saying goes, there's no mistake that can't be rationalized as an exploit. Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest with you. When I, when I hear coaches justify poor play with that, it, it really annoys me. <laughs> And so I recognise that I might have just uh, might have just done that as well. But um, yeah, I mean, I explained it with logic, right? <laughs> but the the the, ish, the big issue then is if you then go, oh well, I've decided to do this as an exploit, but then on the turn, you, your head just goes completely because you're like, oh well, he's supposed to have backdoor flush draws, and I'm going to try and blast him off, and he just doesn't. He just has like a set or a, an ace. Okay, 25 bigs. All right, well, this is lucky. I mean, let's be honest. How bladed does my three bet look here? I mean, I would fold like queens here in this spot. <laughs> um, yeah, not sure about the size. What do you guys think? I mean, honestly, if you're this guy's got jacks, right? If you see a squeeze here, he really needs to believe that I could do this with tens or ace king, right? Uh, I think with both of those hands, I would just rip. So um, maybe we're just lucky. But go us. We are up to 54 big blinds. Uh, in fact, let's just have a quick look at the... See if they've got any suggestions. I mean, there's no there's no issue here. They recommend going to 7.1 off 25-ish big blinds. We went to way too big. But um, yeah, I think, I think this is quite nice. Go a little bit smaller. Fair enough. All right, here we go. We just made a strong hand. Although, unfortunately, the player that called has got 10 big blinds. Um, what? 
Now, my best guess is that we're supposed to bet here, in theory. But he's this guy's absolutely raging, isn't he? Like he's just he's just four bet ripped jacks into kings in the main event. He's gonna he's gonna make some mistakes, and we have such a strong hand. If he hasn't, you know, if he doesn't have anything on this board, he's just gonna check fold, right? But if we check and feign some sort of weakness, yes, okay, occasionally like he can have something on this flop, like a nine, and then a, the turn is a queen, and he gets a bit scared, right? Like, that could happen. But I think he's uh, I think he's fuming. I think he's uh, he's really struggling. So I just continue to check, and I, I don't think this is uh, right in theory. But I'm just going to try to give him every opportunity to uh, make a mistake. Um, on the river, I I think he leads a turn. A, a turn. <laughs> I think he leads the turn. He leads a nine on the turn. Probably just jams a nine, honestly, just for protection of value. Um, so I don't think he has a nine. So if he ever has an ace, we're going to win it all. Well, we want to be able to win it all. So um, I just rip river. Ian's saying one big blind. As an exploit, I just don't think he has anything, honestly. I guess you could bet one big blind and get called by king, queen, high. Or well, uh, pocket twos, ace, king, queen. Uh, I just really don't like this idea of betting anything less than half pot on the river. Um, and if he has an ace, like, he's going to hero us, right? He, I think he's, I think he's fuming. So I think we jam, rather than bet three bigs and he has like ace four of diamonds and just clicks call because he's scared, we just jam and then do the same thing. Um, oh, you meant one big blind on the flop. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, but he had, yeah, just didn't have anything. So, I mean, let's have a quick look. There's a slight mistake here. Um, okay, yeah, so this is where, again, the solver falls down because it's telling me that my raise is a mistake. And yeah, I've got 55 big blinds. I'm not going to shove. Right, so this is the sort of the downside to ready-made solutions or thinking in terms of everyone's got 12 and a half big blinds because that's not what is going on here. Um, so yeah, this would be a really nice opportunity to take a look at the asymmetric stack sizes to see what's going on, but then we can't see what happens post, uh, post flop. Okay. Uh, West Wales Ed, I've woken up to those words, Gaz, no less than half pot Ed, half pot Ed, Ian, lol, me too. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's it's just not very often that you see the solver bet less than half pot, but I will say this, there are some big name players who bet less than half pot in position on the river. Solver doesn't like it, solver thinks that you can, you know, bet bigger. Um, and not open yourself up to being check raised and things. But um, I guess if you're playing against a really weak opponent who's going to call two bigs but fold to three, then I guess you go third. But, I mean, it's not a lot of difference, is it? Um, okay, yeah, so again, bonkers solution, not going to work. Let's go back here. How are we doing for time? I'm probably going to do another, like, five minutes, guys. Let's have a look. Ooh! Not sure about opening fours here with this lineup. I think we almost have to call this. Can't do anything against three bets. I mean, we can. I mean, we can call against the bigger stacks and you know, flop a set. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure about this. I think this is probably really marginal. I do think that if you're playing against really passive opponents, this is fine because. You know, it might just go call, 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 and then you flop a set and you win a huge pot. But against aggressive opponents, I don't think I would open fours here. Uh, okay, so let's have a think about this straight away. We have a lot of strong hands on this board. Our opponent can have some strong hands. You can have king, queen, king, seven, queen, seven. Probably not queen, seven off and king, seven off, although, you know, uh, stranger things have happened. And they have kings and queens, as I mentioned, uh, but they could have pocket sevens and they could have flush draws and straight draws and then just single pairs, king x, queen x, and seven x. Um, but we have some really strong hands here. Also, we have aces. We have ace king that our opponent doesn't. We have kings and queens that our opponent doesn't. We have sevens that they may well have. We may be open king seven suited. Yeah, maybe. Um, and then we've got other 
yeah, other hands. We can have king queen, we can have king jack, king ten, king nine, king eight, um, ace ten of diamonds, ace jack of diamonds, ace whatever. So this is a nice situation for us. It's also nice that the queen and the seven are not connected. Um, we might take a look at this actually, see what happens if we change the seven to an eight. Um, but I've mentioned this before about understanding the connection between the cards on the board. So the king and the queen are obviously connected, but the king and the seven are not connected and the queen and the seven are not connected. Sometimes you see a, a spot where it's like ace, jack, four. So the jack and the four are obviously not connected, but the ace and the jack are, but then the ace and the four are as well. Okay. Um, but sometimes you do see where everything's sort of interlock and there's lots of straight draws that can continue. So it's just worth thinking and going, oh, that's interesting, you know, having that having that playing around somewhere in there. So having said all of that, I wonder if we can go big here and get a seven to fold straight away. If we go small on the flop, then turn potentially we decide to triple this off <laughs> and get a seven to fold and get a queen to fold and uh, king probably doesn't. So yeah, I did go big bet and he, he does fold. So I'd be interested to see what we're saying here. Looks fine to me. Uh, yeah, so you can see that it is the bigger bets that are used in this uh, in this spot. I would like... Um, I thought that might happen more frequently when the 7 was an 8. But if we do go like this 5.5... Let's have a look. Does a 7 fold? Yeah, unless it's 7x of diamonds. So the 7x hands or 7x with a diamond, yeah, all the set, these 7x hands are going to... Uh, going to fold. So whether that happens in practice, I mean, maybe you guys can tell me. Do you see players calling a seven versus a big bet here? If they're weak, absolutely. And But I think against a weak player, you maybe should just adjust your sizing, you know, not worry about it too much. Like put lots of money in with good hands and, and bet less with, with bad hands. Now, guys, don't shoot me for saying that. That's not something that a solver would ever suggest. I'm just trying to give you some ideas about how to play a weak player. And if you're using big bets here, trying to get seven to fold, but they're never folding a seven, then that's not very good either, is it? Um, and if they do call a seven, then great, because then you can just blast turn and jam river and get them to fold it. Um, so, yeah, just thinking you know, a little bit ahead, like a chess, uh, like a chess match or a chess move. Um, okay, what did I want to do? Oh yeah, check whether we change the seven to an eight. Uh, hang on, no, before I do this. So we check 5% and this is what it, this is what it looks like. Checking four and a half percent. There was some movement in there. I didn't really see what it was, but the strategies are quite similar. Um, but there's, there. Are, I mean, yeah, that'd be interesting to see actually versus the big bet. You are still getting, yeah, gut shots to fold, 10-9, jack-9. Uh, where are we? 10-9, jack-9, jack-10. Jack-10, oh, it's a straight open under. Um, let's have a look. We get some 10s and 9s to fold versus big bet. Okay, yeah, so, but I think that if we then start using the, the smaller sizes, then those hands, especially with a diamond, are going to start continuing. Yeah, okay, fair enough. All right, so what does that teach us? Well, uh, in fact, there's one more thing I wanted to take a look at which is um, sort of give you an idea of why we get to, yeah, so look at our equity, why we get to bet very frequently and, and use a lot more of the bigger sizes. We have a huge equity advantage. We have a set advantage. We have two pair advantage. Um, we have over pair advantage and our top pairs are stronger than our opponents. Um, so yeah, all of that, all of those reasons mean we just want to force money in and we can start getting better hands to fold. And this is obviously king, queen, eight rather than king, queen, seven, but it's still, you know, going to be fine. Um, so yeah, picking up on the fact that we get to use some bigger bets here. Um, let's just take one more look at the strategy. I was thinking that, you know, for example, I'm not looking at the strategy here, but I'm looking at PS, so king, queen, eight. Um, a hand like pocket kings is probably not going to use a big bet. And I know, you know, you can see literally see it here. Um, but that would that was the first thing I thought. But a hand like ace is or ace king does, as you can see. Um, but then you see king queen actually do the big betting as well. So you might think, yeah, but we block a king and a queen. Like, how does that work? But you're only blocking them like once, right? 
Whereas kings, you can see three kings, it's harder for them to have a king. Um, okay. So that was fine. Pocket fours again. Uh, we don't get to play this one. Ace king suited. Three bet. Nice. I like it. See a four bet. Okay. If this is a really good player, then I was going to say just rip. <laughs> Uh, but actually they're going to have some bluffs and ace king suit does really nicely if we just flat but it's a really lousy spot with the SPR I think just jam is, is basically what we should do having said that if this is a weaker player who whose four bet range is really really strong I'm going to say something really crazy here it's not I, I didn't do it obviously but I want you guys to think if their four bet range includes no bluffs can you ever jam ace king suited like if their four bet range is literally queens plus and ace king, can you jam ace king suited? Now, if it includes ace king, then absolutely. But if let's say that they say like they just they flat ace king, they're like oh god, I don't know what to do with ace king. They're just queens plus. Then ace king suited is like oh god, I mean, what do you do now? They they don't have any, so you're not get, gaining any EV from them folding. There's no fold equity. They just always call, and you're like, okay, well let's flip against queens and run it against aces and kings. Great, that sounds amazing. So yeah, I do think against really nitty weak players here, you have rather than just go, well, I've got ace king suited. How do, I can't you know I can't not get this in. You should instead go right. What does their range look like? Can I, pro can you know, is it profitable to um, to jam here? Now, even if that happened, uh, it's it's hard, isn't it, <laughs> to uh, to fold? So uh, I just ripped. I think he had Ace King off as well, um, or Ace King off. Um, but yeah, no, I do think it's an interesting interesting one. Looking at it now, in a soft field, um, part of me felt like we've got a lot of re-entries we can use if this is no good. Right, which is you know, not thinking in terms of EV because if we ran this and we said right, his four bet range is queens plus, ace king suited probably can't jam. Sometimes you see like it, that it gets to jam because it blocks aces and kings, and then there's just enough chips out there that you can get it in. Um, but yeah, we want him to have some some bluffs that just fold, don't we? Because then we get the bluffs to fold, so it could be I don't know like king king 10 suited or ace five suited uh we get those hands to fold they have a little bit of equity against us not much but a little bit uh we block aces and kings and then we could just get it in against queens which would be ideal uh chop says what about his bet size uh this one his four bet size is like just over 2x i think it's pretty reasonable he wants us to fold our bluffs and continue with our value so i think that's Pretty reasonable. Um, yeah, it looks like we didn't make any mistakes, but I just want to have a look at this four betting range. Uh, da, 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 what's going on? So cutoff raises. Okay, back to the cutoff. Yeah, I mean, so firstly, there's basically no hands that want a small four bet at this stack depth. Um, just wants to rip or fold. So we're that's not really just not gonna work, is it? Um I, in fact I might have just missed it. Let me take a look. One second. Yeah, where where are these where where's this tiny little bit? Point one percent. I can't see it. Um what stack size did we start? It's sixty big blinds. What's um Mm. I mean, certainly I've seen before 60 big blinds, it's just flat or flat or jam because it gets kind of awkward. Um, let's let, let's take a look at our range viewer and see facing a three bet what you should do at 60 bigs. Uh, he was cut off. We were big blind. Yeah, so you can see like there's hardly any four betting. It's just jamming. It's just an awkward stack size. But as we progress through the tournament, we might see some more four betting um, rather than rather than jamming so yeah something to i mean just something to to think about um but there's literally no bluffs and then if we don't know anything about this player and we just think they're very weak 
I, mean, I don't I, I don't want to I just I find it really hard to uh, to say it but honestly if you put it into a solver and just said he's got queens plus then you probably just got a fold but then you could argue well he can, he might have ace five suited he might have just some random nonsense um the fact that he's small four bet of 60 bigs early in the tournament when yeah, there's not too much risk premium makes me think that he is weighted towards very strong hands and no bluffs. So honestly, what do you guys think? Let, am I just being crazy here? I, mean, I, can, I, I, can, I can prove it with a solver, but would you guys ever fold here if you knew this guy was a nit with four bets and, you know, Early on in a in a main event, how often do you see four bet bluffs from unknown players? Ian likes a call. Just not sure. What are we hoping for? Like a Like, we're hoping that he... I mean, if he does have some bluffs, then I can see the merits of calling to keep in those weaker hands, right? Because if we jam, they just fold and then we just get it in against stronger hands. I can see the merits of it. I can see the logic. Um, yeah. Shredder says, no, I rip and blame variants. <laughs> just run into it. Yeah. Hmm. I do think it's a it's a pretty interesting one. Maybe this is where we should we should we should wrap things up for today. Uh, if you haven't done so already and you're enjoying the stream and you want to be notified when I'm live next time, hit the follow button. If you're watching on YouTube, you know, think about subscribing, giving the video or the stream a like if that's how it works. That would be awesome. And then most importantly, if you haven't ordered it yet, grab grab this now. Final table. Look. Look who the forward is by. You might know this guy. He's called Phil Helmuth, and he wrote the forward for this uh, for this book. Um, and I'll read the first line. What I really love first of all. Oh, sorry, let's try and put my teeth back in. What I really love first of all about the final table is that Gareth James gives long, detailed examples of how to play hands at a final table. There we go. There's a little, there's, there's more as well. He didn't just write one sentence. <laughs> um, but yeah, pick up the book. It's called The Final Table. You can see I've, it's right here now. The Final Table by me, 336 pages long, 131 and more hand examples, lots of charts and diagrams. Um, I know that it's Father's Day coming up. And if you are a father or you have a father, then you should maybe think about getting it um, for your father um, and uh, or suggesting it to your kids or your wife or your husband, whoever buys Father's Day presents, okay? Um, cool, all right, so I think that's gonna be it for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed it and I will catch you next time. Ian says, it's effing class, everyone. Mandatory reading. Well, I appreciate that, Ian. You are a superstar for saying that. Thank you very much. Um, adios, guys. See you next week, 4 p.m. UK time for more study and training with me, Gareth James.